What's up people coming at you live from the middle of the Pacific. Today is a really special day for three reasons. One, it's Independence Day, which is the US Independence Day, July 4th. Two, it's a full moon. And three, what's three again? We're halfway there. It's halfway day! Today is day 10, as you can see from this finely written watch bill. Looks like we have about 10 days left. We are gonna break out the champagne, we're gonna fire off some flares tonight, and we're gonna go for a dip in the center of the Pacific Ocean. First, I wanna show you where we're at. I've been offered to board a plane bound for Hawaii. Get on a boat I've never seen, with people I've never met, and sail 3,300 nautical miles across the Pacific Ocean. What would you do? The boat in question is a 1984 Mason 63, designed by Alvin Mason in the late 1970s. Mason had, in his early career, worked for John Alton, whose famous designs include the Bristol 35, Fuji 45, and many custom schooners. Having also been the head draftsman for Sparkman Stevens, he took many of the design elements from the yachts he penned over his career and put them into his legacy boat, the Mason 63. The crew includes Mark, the owner of the boat, his daughter Erin, her boyfriend Jake, and my buddy Ryan. Yeah, okay, I know one of them. Needless to say, after 30,000 miles on a catamaran, I was more than a bit intrigued to see how this beautiful yacht would handle herself in the deep blue. Would you like to make a toast, sir? I would like to make a toast to our halfway adventure um, and uh, thank Neptune for a safe journey so far. Good sailing, good seas, and good company. Here, here. So, with that Arr. said, we shall open our champagne. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a special toast to James. Here's to you and here's to me. The best of friends will always be. But if by chance we disagree, then you and here's to me. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July, guys. Happy Fourth. Happy Fourth. Happy fourth. Okay, it's day 11. It's about noon. Uh, we had some crepes in the morning that yours truly made, and we're still motoring. We've been motoring since about four or five in the morning yesterday. On all of yesterday's models, it said the wind was supposed to fill in by 1 p.m., but now it's looking more like 10 p.m. But it'll be today, most likely, or tonight. There's some pretty good long clouds over this way and over this way, but who knows? Come on, I'll show you. You got yourself a standard piece of rope. What you do with that rope is you're gonna put it here on the table like that with a loop. Take that loop, hold it on top of itself. So you got these two little eyes. I'm gonna take the right eye and I'm gonna tuck the edge under the left eye like that. Now we got a pretzel. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this little piece. We're gonna go under here. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna go under here and over here. So, under here, over here, under here, over here. Got a little shape kind of like that. Now we're gonna take this piece, we're gonna fold it down. I'm gonna take this piece and we're gonna fold it down. 
that, my friends, is a hackamore nut. We're not motoring anymore. It is officially day 12. Let's go see what the kids are doing. Caught a tender moment. <laughs> <laughs> what are you making us? Eggs. Oh, well, open the oven. Yeah. And biscuits. Okay, you want to see the inside of the oven? Yeah. I can't get it open. <laughs> How does it work? Biscuits. What? Biscuits and gravy. <laughs> And leftover potatoes. And brownies. And brownies. <laughs> Dude, you guys rock. <laughs> How long have you been in here cooking? Since 8.30. <laughs> well, nice it's job. Probably noon right now, I don't know. Four, four course breakfast, dude. Yeah, they've been down there digging around for a couple hours. Dude, did you see what they made? Biscuits no. and gravy and yeah. brownies and, and pancakes and potatoes? <laughs> no. <laughs> Our four course breakfast, courtesy of Aaron and Jake. Good. How is it? Excellent. Is it everything you've hoped for? It's yep. really good. <laughs> so it's afternoon day 12. This is the first day that we have the motors off after 47 hours of motoring, two days of motoring. We're all very happy about that. And we're doing a little maintenance and checking all the engine parts and the generator and uh, this is the point of the trip where we need to make sure everything's still good to go in case we need it for an emergency. So we check the oil in the generator, we check the oil in the engine, and the oil in the transmission. Everything looks good. Uh, looks like the oil in the engine's getting ready to be changed. Um, on these Detroits, it needs to be changed like every 100 hours. And How many hours do we have on it now? 50. Yeah, so we're halfway. But it still looks good. No, you are not. Yes, I am. No, you bet. Part of the journey. <laughs> part of the journey. Fog <laughs> heads. That's gross. This happened just so James would have something to film. I swear to God. Oh, hey, let's lock this door here. It's too bad the smell doesn't come through the camera. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, I'll take a shower. <laughs> Hey, I'm documenting everything that's going on, including any cuddles time. <laughs> so, James, can you explain to me this whole duck bill thing? The duck bills? I like <laughs> this. I just don't, I don't know if I understand it yet. <laughs> and duck bills go like this, they open for poo, they close. They open for poo, they close. <laughs> Draw your picture. Mark and his mortal out. enemy. <laughs> Did you read that? Poop. He said he can draw you a picture of <laughs> We have been having quite a few head issues, and not this head, but the marine style. <laughs> Look, you know, we're all a little crazy too after, what, 12 days at sea? Mm -hmm. Mark, Mark just really likes playing with poo. He's got a squirt gun full of poo uh -huh. for he the likes, second time this trip. He likes to explain the process of how these toilets work. With his hands. With the duck bills. Duck bills. Duck bill. It's all about the duck bill action. <laughs> yeah. And the and the turds. <laughs> 
What's up everybody? Today's knot of the day brought to you by Ryan, the speed knot. Bam! How is it done? Alright, what you got here is a piece of rope. Pull both palms outward in front of you like this. In my case, I'm right-handed, so I got the short end on the right hand. Basically what you're gonna do is you're going to whip this short end around here. It's gonna come up and over your hand like that, all right? So slowly like that. Next step, take this loop, pass it through this and pull on that. One more time fast. Nicely done, sir. Okay, it's 4 a.m. Uh, it's day 13, I think, and it's wet. Uh, it's cold, we're having a following wind, so we're going as, as far downwind as we can, and it is cold, man. It's cold, it's cold even in this stuff. We just jived the boat. I came up one wash about a half an hour ago, and Jake and I jived, and now we're making um, like 150, 160 good, which is nowhere near where we want to be. We want to go to 103, and we can either make 050 or 150 good. So it's pretty much the exact wrong position for the wind for us right now. But as we get farther south, we'll be able to turn to the east and go towards California. So I don't like saying it like this. Okay, so you take your line, you double it over, and you're gonna make two bends. One, two. So you've got this kind of shape, like an eight. Now, if this is a snowman, and here's his legs, here's his body, and here's his head, you're gonna take his head and flip it underneath his legs and through his body. That'll give you a knot with three bites on it. One, two, three. So it doesn't matter which way you pull it, you can always get it out. So, it's later in the day now, and my coat is off. <laughs> Not because it's warm. <laughs> well, yeah, it is a little bit, bit warmer, and we've been messing with the water maker. We've been running the generator. We're doing like eight and a half knots surfing down waves right towards San Francisco for the first time in the whole trip. We're first trip, right. yep, we're going, we're going the right way. The boat's handling really, really well. I'm really uh, pleasantly surprised with the whole shape surfing down waves. She doesn't like the point and she doesn't like to go downwind, but 60 degrees off the wind is what she really likes. That's her sweet spot. That's her fastest point of attack. And as you can see from the current speed, She's a demon. <laughs> this is this is catamaran speeds. All right, it's end of day thirteen. We're eating some albacore tuna. We caught the other day. Delicious. With some rice. The sunset behind us is super pretty. It's a little bit stormy. We're we're doing 
like between seven and a half and eight and a half knots, which is pretty cool on a mono hole. So Not I, too bad. I didn't film much today, but what I did film was the biggest waves we've seen so far. So overall, we're over halfway. We could be there in seven days. I, I think we're gonna arrive on the day 20 or 21. Oh, and I've had a great passage so far. It's been a good one. It's been lots of fun. Yeah, everybody's cool. We've been eating really well. Uh, the weather has been okay. The It's been cold though. We had to go all the way up to 48 degrees north, which is super far north. We're basically at the same uh, latitude as Seattle. And now we gotta turn around and go all the way back to San Fran. So, that's where we're at now. Only had the motor for two days. Yeah. That wasn't too bad. Nice to be sailing again. Yeah. For sure. Everybody's in Fowleys and cold weather gear. It's cold. It's cold. Yeah. But hey, it's not raining. So, yeah. that makes me happy. Last night was so cold. Oh my God. It was, it was like the coldest night we've had so far and raining at our backs. So like everybody was wearing their hoods and just getting pelted by rain all night. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that thing needs to be screwed in more. And yet another thing to fix. We haven't had too many things go wrong on the boat, really. No, thankfully. We lost a batten car, which was kind of a catastrophic fail for the main. So we had a double beef main for like a week, but. Other than that, we've been able to fix everything. Yep. Mm, this is good. Turned out good. Amazing. Nicely done. Wow. Your local time is 5.25 a.m. Day 14. The trip is two-thirds over. And we are doing eight knots right towards California. This is following seas and fair winds. We were very lucky today. So this is a good day, but a cold day, it's cold, it's cold. The wind is actually hitting me so hard that I have to put on my rain catcher on the top to keep the wind out. And this thing keeps my face warm. And it looks like we have about 1,100 miles to go. And we're thinking about shooting the gate and going around Alcatraz when we get there and then going down to Half Moon Bay. And so that means going underneath Golden Gate Bridge, around Alcatraz, coming out the bridge, and then going south. Well, the waves are getting pretty big. I'd say they're probably 10 footers, and um, the boat's handling it really well, as you can see. The crew's handling it well too, but we're running out of food. We're out of all the fresh oranges, we're out of fresh, uh, pretty much everything except we've got some peppers and cucumbers, that's about it. Oh, some cabbage, we've got some cabbage. So that's the status update for this morning. Looks nice out there. So I had to wake up Erin and have her doctor me up. Thanks, Erin. Everywhere. Am I bleeding everywhere? Oh, just a little bit. Thank you for doctoring me. It's surprisingly not like bad looking. No, it doesn't look that bad. It looks like there's a massacre on deck. Does it? Out there? <laughs> it's like blood. It's just blood <laughs> So I need to be real careful because I can get infected because it's a puncture wound. Yeah, a deep puncture wound, it's it's like, especially one that you were cutting a fish with, it has all this bacteria on it and then you just jabbed it in super deep into your hand. Mm -hmm. So even with me flushing with it, with iodine, you know, I don't know if I got all the way down at the bottom. Okay. You know, it's hard to, it's hard to kill all the germs, so we just have to pay really close attention to it. Okay. And, uh... If I start acting funny, you know I have fish madness. Yeah. Mad fish disease. And then if you do anything, like touch another fish, wash the dishes, you should wear a glove. Over whatever. So you're saying I can't do dishes or do any work? Really? No, I didn't say that. I can't. I don't think I can stand <laughs> wash. <either. laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're awesome. I'm sorry to wake you up. No big deal. Not a big deal at all. Dr. Aaron, give me a hug. <laughs> Thanks. Ah, I feel so much better now. Good. 
All right, our next knot is a sheet bend. What you do is you take your sheet, your towel, or your sail sheet, whatever it may be, lay it down, put your line on top of it, then you take your sheet, you flip it over the line, and you pick it all up, just like that. Now you take your line, you go underneath the infinite part of the line, you wrap it around, and up and through. Now, pull it tight, and you got yourself a sheet that pulls it nice and tight. Okay, it is day 15, it's 5 p.m. The wind's been ripping all day. We broke out the plans for the boat today. We've read a lot today. You've been on watch like all day. Seems that way. <laughs> uh, we woke up and had to tend the sails. Me and Aaron were like sail masters last night, all night long. Sails up, sails down. Jib out, jib in. Jive, jive the other way. <laughs> it was interesting. Didn't get any video of that. It was just too crazy. The wind's been about 20 knots all day, which is actually really comfortable for this boat. It's just kind of a lot of wind. It's a lot to deal with. I'm gonna show you guys some of the sights to see on the ocean, just like yesterday. <laughs> it's the same as yesterday. Sweet. 